Hi, I'm Nathan Birma. I'm Educational Technologist and Associate Director of Distance Learning at Kelvin Theological Seminary in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'll be talking at FlipCon about creative ideas for learning activities in the Flip classroom. And I'll be basing this largely on a list, a collection idea of ideas that we've come up with that we call our Idea Box. And this is not a list that you should uh, take and use any of the items as is, but rather it's a foundation, a catalyst for your own thinking, your own brainstorming for creative ways to get students learning in your flip classroom. A lot of these ideas we first came up with for online courses, but we found that they adapt well to the flip classroom as well. So in this video, what I want to do is give you a little background, first talking about why variety is so important in learning design, talking about some pedagogical values that we're trying to serve with our idea list, and finally opening this idea box to see what's in there and uh, have you do some thinking and brainstorming uh, ahead of FlipCon uh, in July. So first variety, why is it so important? Well monotony is a danger in any learning environment, the traditional classroom, the online classroom, blended, hybrid, flipped, you name it. So even though you've done something creative by flipping your classroom and having the videos uh, that students are watching outside and then coming inside to do discussion or a worksheet or something like that, there's still a danger that you'll fall into a new kind of routine. And so you want to have students doing different kinds of things uh, in your flipped classroom. Otherwise, they sort of lapse into an artificial automatic pilot mode. Um, and so we want to avoid that. You want to stretch your students, get them doing different kinds of things, using different kinds of skills, and even uh, activating and accommodating different kinds of learning styles. You want to stretch yourself as a teacher. You don't want to fall into a rut. You want to find new ways of facilitating learning by trying different things uh, that will give you a new perspective on your role, too. And you want to balance your pedagogical modes. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a paper by Bauer and colleagues, uh, with, and there's a bit.ly link there, that talks about these four pedagogical modes, transmissive, dialogic, constructionist, and co-constructive. Delivery, discourse, development, and collaboration. And they say it's a healthy activity to look for balance in, uh, in your class over the course of a semester or year. How many of these modes are you using? Traditionally, of course, we have over-relied on the transmissive mode. We've seen teaching as just a matter of delivering instruction. Uh, but there's a danger, even in the flipped classroom, as we move away from the transmissive mode, or as we have the transmissive mode happen in the videos outside the classroom, there's a danger that we'll over-rely on other modes inside the classroom. Now, all of these modes are good. The only danger is if we use one too much, then we're not using the other enough. So take a big picture look at your class and how many of these different modes are happening day in, day out, week in, week out, over the course of your class. So talking about variety, talking about pedagogical modes uh, sets the table for talking about pedagogical values. These are kind of basic principles and big picture outcomes that we've identified for our purposes. Some may map on to Common Core, others might be a little more ad hoc, but here are some kind of big picture aims that we've identified and we want to see if we can serve by doing different kinds of learning activities. First, distribution of labor. We don't need to have all of our learners doing the exact same thing over the course of a lesson, a class, or a week. Uh, we can jigsaw it. We can have different students different, doing different things and then the parts come together to form a whole. Something you've probably uh, done or thought about in your traditional classroom, but it's important in the flipped classroom as well. We want to raise the stakes. How much is at stake for the average uh, assignment or task that a student is assigned to do? And I don't mean this just in, se in the sense of making the grade count more, uh, but does the student feel that there's an extra level of importance attached to something they're asked to do, or do they feel it's just kind of busy work and going through the motions? We'll take a look at some examples. Rhetorical register. Are there different rhetorical modes that we can ask students uh, to get into as they write or they speak uh, so that uh, it stretches them rhetorically? Oral presentation. We found that in our online courses we were asking students to do a lot of writing and we wanted to shift that. We wanted to focus more on oral presentation because that's such an important skill. Writing is hugely important, certainly, uh, but we want to have a good balance between written and oral. Uh, that's true of the flipped classroom too. You don't want to bring your students into the classroom and have them do all writing. You want to balance a good balance between written and oral um, capabilities. 
And similarly, visual fluency. Uh, when we over rely on verbal expression and verbal uh, modes of learning, uh, we neglect visual learning. And so we want to make sure that that's well represented. And finally, casting a wider net. Um, how do we get students engaging literally with the wider net, the internet, and all the resources that are out there? This is the real strength of the flipped classroom, is there isn't a self-contained or overly limited uh, set of concepts or materials or resources that they can draw on. The flipped classroom lends itself to exploration, and so we'll look at some examples of ways that that can happen. So those are some of the values that we've tried to identify as important to learning design uh, for both our online and flipped classroom environments, and really any kind of learning environment. Um, with that kind of background, uh, take a look now at the idea box. There's a link in the description, and uh, we can give you it here. It's initially These were initially posted at uh, my blog, Portable Pedagogy, uh, and you see the link there on Tumblr. And it started with 53 ideas and activities that we took from our own experience, from brainstorming, and from outside sources uh, that we looked at. So click the link, look around, and before July, try to find some ideas that you think you maybe could try to use in your flipped classroom as is. Find some that you think may be okay or even good, but could be better if you adapted them. And then think of brand new ideas that you don't see there. But once you get the brainstorming wheels ticking, uh, you, you start to think of new possibilities. And I want to hear about uh, each of these categories in July. What did you find useful as is? What could you adapt? And what brand new ideas could you bring to the table or to the box uh, for creative learning in your classroom? So take a look, browse around, and I'll look forward to seeing you at FlipCon in July.